So what do you think constitutes a five-star rating? I find myself contemplating that a lot. I I don't, I'm not the kind of reader who looks for perfection. I'm just going to go ahead and just be honest about that. I see people writing reviews sometimes. And again, every person is different. So I get it. If that's you, you do you. But sometimes I wonder why people even like consume fiction or even nonfiction literature, books, movies, music, whatever, because they're just so critical. It's like, do you even enjoy what you're doing? But that's just how I perceive it. It might be different for that person. I do not consume things with the mentality of I'm going to break this down. I'm going to cut it down. I'm going to single out everything that is wrong with it and nothing will ever be good enough for me. And I feel like that's how some people are when they review things, but not everybody. I've also come across reviewers who it seems like they love everything. (laughs) Everything is great to them. And so it's like, how discerning is your, you know, opinion if everything is just great. I try to be somewhere in the middle of that. I like to recognize the fact that people are human. We are not perfect. Um, And so I also, as a writer myself, knows that there's a lot of work that goes into it. So anyway, my whole point is, is that I try not to just give out five stars all the time, but I do feel like I maybe give out five stars a lot more often than other people do just because when I read something, I'm reading it because I want to read it. I am reading it for pleasure. I don't have an agenda. And as long as I'm entertained to some degree, it's going to, I'm going to give it a decent rating. And so I don't care if it has, you know, a handful of grammatical errors, because sometimes um, our brains see things that uh, we are that we believe are there, even if they're not there, you can pay a a copy editor, a line editor, and they might miss that mistake. If you've written a novel and it's 400 pages and you have five grammatical errors in it, I'm not going to give you a three-star rating. And I see people do that and it drives me crazy. So the whole point of me going through this whole spiel is to say that the ratings that I, I think I'm giving this month are a little bit more varied than what I usually give, just because I'm being honest And I do believe there is a way to be honest without overly hyping something, but also not completely tearing something down. And I feel like when I read other people's reviews, that's not what I'm seeing at all. I either see people who love everything or people who hate everything. And I want to be somewhere in the middle. So let's start with what I read in the month of March. I completed three titles. And so I'm doing really good on my Goodreads challenge. So let's start with the first thing I finished. In Darkness, the Vampire. This was an overall Goodreads rating as of a five star. But as I get into the review, you'll see um, my actual rating is a little bit different from that. Um, This is a short review just because I didn't have a whole lot to say about this, but it will explain it. So here we go. Actual rating 4.75. This was a nice take on the classic vampire trope. It told a compelling story of a sort of treasure hunt. There is an element of romance in the love story slowly developing between two characters, but it's not the central focus of the narrative. Uh, Like the way this author depicts the vampire culture and that of the human they share this world with. I do feel that the story, I do feel that the story of the dead brother could have been touched on more, but maybe there's supposed to be more to the story. A sequel, a prequel, I don't know. This was a short and easy read, not overly complicated, but not too basic either. Kudos to the author. Recommend it to fans of paranormal, dark fantasy, and subtle romantic subplots. So there you have it. Kind of cut and dry, very sweet. If you like vampire stories, I think you'll like this. If you don't like vampire stories, please don't pick this up and be like, "Ugh, it's a vampire story. Yeah, it's a vampire story. It's actually a really good vampire story. 
And like I said, there is um, a kind of a love story in it. So, I mean, that element is there. I don't know that I would classify this purely as a romance. I think a paranormal romance is a very fitting title where the paranormal supersedes the romance. But the romance is important to the story. It is very important to the story. But I just wanted people to understand that it's not the central focus. The kind of treasure hunt that they're going on is the central focus. And the love story is kind of part of that. I thought this was a really good, well-balanced story um for anyone who likes paranormal or dark fantasy so there you go in darkness the vampire all right let's see what's next uh let's see here okay so the next thing i read was super short so my review is super short so my iwsg book club does this thing now where we do a monthly themed challenge because our spotlight books are now quarterly and so for our themed challenge in the month of march we chose horses. I'm not sure how he does that. I think my co mod she's amazing. She does a lot of behind the scenes stuff for us that I just, I'm so glad she does. And I think she came up with a lot of our challenges. And so anyway, the idea is that the members can pick anything that they want to read that fits within that challenge. It could be a novel. It could be nonfiction. It could be a comic book. It could be an audio book. It could be whatever they want to read within that theme. So um, I chose to set my goal challenge for two books. One was a full length novel and the other was this work of short fiction. So let's just get right into it. I read A Fae Horse, A Fairy Tale. My overall star rating for this is a five. And let's look at my review. Actual rating 4.5. Um, this is a super short fun read loaded with magic, mystery, and suspense. I wish I knew why the Faith Horse originally appeared. I didn't quite get that. I did, however, get the ending and thought it was perfect for all that happened. Recommend it to fans of short fiction and fantasy. So again, super cut and dry. This was a wonderfully fun story. Um, very short. <laughs> Um, I Yeah, I do think that it could have been expounded on just a little bit by explaining where the horse came from, but it was such an action-packed read and such a you know short um, thing that overall I was entertained by, and so that's why I gave it a high rating. All right, let's see here. And then the last thing that I read, so I mentioned obviously the IWSG monthly theme of horses. And then we also have our quarterly reads. So I went ahead and read one of those, which was A Spiral of Hooves, which actually served both purposes. So I got myself a two for one. So <laughs> I am going to go ahead and get into the review for this. This one is a little bit more lengthy than the other ones, just because I wanted to explain the rating that I gave it um, for anyone who might be interested in, you know, picking this up. So Spiral of Hooves, the overall Goodreads rating is a four star. And let's get into my review. Actual rating 3.75. This was a new reading experience for me. Reading a genre I don't read a lot and reading about a subject I know very little. I would consider this a contemporary suspense mystery. It just didn't feel dark enough until the end to be a thriller, although it starts with the death and others die along the way. The horse racing world is, is the setting of the story, and beyond watching the Kentucky Derby each year, I knew absolutely nothing about this culture. Why I didn't give this a higher rating has a lot to do with the genre and the subject. For anyone who reads a lot of contemporary mysteries that aren't cozy, this is probably right up their alley. I have been reading some cozy mysteries so I am getting more familiar with the mystery genre but this was more of like a suspense thriller type mystery so that's something that I'm still kind of getting used to uh let's see where did I leave off for anyone who isn't trying to understand the terminology and culture of the horse racing world while also following the characters arcs and mystery this should be a much smoother read. So basically I'm just explaining that this was a kind of a tough read for me because I was trying to understand the terminology and the culture plus understand the mystery that was happening plus figure out who all the different characters were. So I just had like a lot of processing going on that didn't make me not enjoy the story, but I think it was just wasn't as smooth of a read as it could have been had I already had some background knowledge. Back to the review. 
Overall, though, this is a good story, a solid suspense mystery. While I like the character of Armand, one of the main male characters, I was never too fond of the main female character. There wasn't anything particular that I didn't like about her. I just never felt drawn to her. I like that she represented what many would consider a person with a disability. She has diabetes, and I love the way the author used her to explain what managing that condition is like for someone who can't relate to it. So yeah, I, I really loved the fact that this main female character um, has diabetes and you get to see her kind of managing it throughout the story. And that's not something I think that I've really read before. I mean, I've seen, you know, characters with different like health issues and stuff like that. But um, the way this author just kind of explained how like from day to day, how she has to like check her glucose and do the, you know, do these different things. I really liked that aspect. So if from that point of view, I, I really liked her character and what she represented but the actual character itself, I don't know, something about her I just never really connected to, but that's just me personally. I also never understood the appeal of the other main male characters. No spoilers here. So there's two main male characters, one I liked, one I didn't like. I didn't understand what the appeal was to his character like at all. Like the main female character, again, I didn't dislike her, but I also didn't love her. She was just kind of this neutral entity. I love what she represented it as far as a person dealing with a chronic medical condition. I thought that representation was great. So, you know, fine. We got the main male character, Armand. We have the main female character, who's Carly, which I don't mention that here. And then we have this other guy that I was just like, I don't know why he's here. <laughs> but that was just me. So now we're going to go back to where I was before. I felt like the author did a great job of explaining a lot of things. I think for me, it's just hard to read something for pleasure while you're also learning the basics of a culture and or industry while trying to solve a mystery. I will say that once I stopped trying so hard to understand everything, I began to enjoy the story much more. By the end, most of it all made sense. So again, this is really, this whole review is really based upon my own personal um, experience with reading this story, not having the background information. Someone else might read this and be like, oh, this is great. I'm learning all kinds of stuff. And so that's why the rating isn't higher. But for me, I think it's still a good rating. Like this is still something that I would recommend. I'm not done yet. I'm almost done. <laughs> Back to the review. <sighs> there were some scenes and or conversations that I felt were too long. I think this book could have been shorter. I actually think releasing it as a novella series would have been great for me. Um, the three acts of this story could easily be standalone parts in a series. After the second act, I thought the book was over, but it kept going, which seemed to drag for me. But I'm glad I stuck through to the end to see how it all played out. Recommend it to equestrian enthusiasts and fans of mystery thrillers. So there you have it. Spiral of Hooves. Even though it wasn't this sp spectacular like reading experience for me, it's one of those things where you have, for me, reading is either about the journey or the destination. And this was definitely one of those reads where it was about the destination because the journey was not as enjoyable. Um, it wasn't bad. Like, I don't, I don't want to make it seem like this was not um, a pleasurable read in any way. It's just, it wasn't as pleasurable as I think it could have been um, if I had just had some background information and um, understood some things a little bit better. And um, so, yeah, I am definitely glad that I read this book and um, I would recommend it. If you like mystery thrillers, uh, definitely read it. If you are into horses at all, read it. And so, yeah, that is what I read in the month of March. So not too shabby. Two um, novel length books and one work of short fiction. And I'm hoping to repeat that in the month of April. What have you guys been reading? I would love to know. And until next time, guys, stay safe and be blessed. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to go back just a little bit. I, I might edit this out. Maybe I'll make it a blooper. I don't know. 
But basically, I'm not even going to tell you what I did, but it's okay. <laughs> hey, guess what? If you like what you see, you can totally subscribe to this channel. You could also give it a like and leave me a comment. I would totally love that. Okay, bye-bye.